Hi everyone, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. This week we'll be discussing some tips uh, on composition for beginners. So I've had literally no time to get out this week and make a video. Uh, and without wanting to miss a weekly video, I decided we would stay right in studio and discuss some composition that you may find very beneficial in your landscape photography. So I picked several, I handpicked several of my images that I, I thought might have some, some, some tech, tips and techniques that you may find helpful when you're in the field on location and trying to think about, well, you know, how do I want to frame this image? How do I want to compose this image? So without further ado, let's dive in and uh, discuss some of these images. Okay, let's get started. These are the seven images that I chose for this uh, for this video, and we'll start with this guy right up here. What I had in mind uh, was this idea of, of just bringing the viewer through this scene and using these elements to use this, this zigzag sort of um, motion to bring you into the frame and finally up into this gorgeous sunrise. But you notice here that um, this image will also work if I were to crop in a little and maybe start thinking about putting that sun in that upper third. Now, if I did something like this, there's still space. Now, this beacon is not the uh, the, the subject, but it, it adds to this, this image. So I would not want to do something like this where I cropped in so much. You know, we did something like this. The sun does look nice in that position, but this, this is beginning to get a little bit tight. But if we did something like this, where we, we kept some space, not quite where we were, we were somewhere in this area right here, but if we had did something like this, we still sort of have that, that idea of, of bringing the viewer through this zigzag S-curve and up into the, the sun. There's still space here, so this sits comfortably. And a good idea, by the way, when you're working in Lightroom here, I love to keep the thumbnail uh, on screen and I use it constantly because especially if you're using a larger monitor I'm on a 32 inch monitor so when you're making changes sometimes you're you're, you're so into the, the 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 image and a large scale um, that you you miss the um, you know the overall balance of the image but by using your thumbnail here you can quickly see uh, how these elements balance in this image all right, so this image, I, I just had a lot of fun with this image. This is more or less an experiment of playing with um, focal distance and using color to the compositional advantage, almost pastel-like, hints of pastel anyway. So the idea here was to focus on the foreground reeds here and then have everything behind there blur out. So a good way to do this is with a telephoto lens. If we look up here, you can see this was shot at 150 millimeters. And you'd also want your aperture wide open. In this case, you can see I am shooting wide open at 3.5. I could have stopped down to 2.8, but I think 3.5 seemed to give me the effect I was looking for. I wanted to have some structure to this, so if we select the crop tool, you can see that I actually rotated the angle of this uh, composition because I wanted to get the, the reeds at a certain angle and uh, eventually coming up with this, this lovely image that uh, you know I just really enjoyed. So our next image is in Yosemite at Tunnel View which is probably a very familiar looking image. And that is quite the point here. As you can see, I uh, gave uh, two thirds of the weight of this image to the sky. And uh, I also shot in a vertical or portraiture format. So, you know, why is that? And some of the reasons behind this is that this is a very well-known scene. If you know anything about Yosemite, you say, hey, that's El Cap, you know, there's Half Dome in the background, Cathedral Rocks. There's a lot of information here just by the shape. You still make all this out. So with all this happening up here in the sky, why not go ahead and capture some of these really nice cloud formations? We have enough color here to keep the, the viewer interested with some of these beautiful tones of light coming in. But if we go into the crop, I mean, there's a lot of weight to the sky, but these are just beautiful tones of blue and there's some really nice cloud formations. And uh, I just thought this was um, a great way to, you know, show this, uh, the ton of you seen. I mean, this is what's different, right? Everyone that goes to Yosemite can, can shoot ton of you, but the sky is going to be different. And in this case, um, I can afford to give that much weight to this, to this lovely sky. 
Um, so that's the idea behind a, a, a photo like this. And by the way, this was shot on an iPhone in Pro Raw, which is uh, which is pretty pretty impressive, I might add. So this next photo is one of my favorite places. This is Ricketts Glen in Pennsylvania. So I was thinking in this image about layers. If you look, this is almost like a, a third layer. This is a third layer. And then of course you have the, the upper section, which there's some nice uh, leaves turning colors here. But why not crop in closer here? So, you know, why not do something like, like this, where you can maybe get rid of all that weight on the side and even get rid of some of that. I mean, that does look pretty nice overall. However, the idea behind this image other than, than layers. By the way, if you toggle the O key on your keyboard, you can toggle through all these framing tools. So that O, O, there's your, your golden circle. And we're gonna get right over to the rule of thirds. But furthermore, I'm thinking diagonal lines, you know, these sort of triangular lines that are all leading the eye right to this waterfall. So if you kind of follow this corner down, you can see it's just bringing it right in. And I'm shooting wide here, so I'm on a 14 millimeter. And you can put, and so the the image gets distorted with a wide angle lens, and you can see these powerful diagonal lines coming in here as well, and here, all converging right into this waterfall. In fact, let's go back to our crop tool, and let's get down to some of these diagonal tools. So again, you can now you can see these wonderful diagonal lines bringing you right into the waterfall from here, this rock, this 45 degree angle, and then of course all this section right here just draws the eye right in. When you're on location, think about how you can use lines, especially triangular 45 degree angle lines because they can be very powerful to, to draw the, the viewer in. A lot of times we think of linear lines. We think of just straight linear lines drawing you in from the bottom of the frame. But don't forget to use these, these lines that can draw you in diagonally. All right, so this next image I just absolutely love. This was shot up in uh, Yosemite in the high country up at Olmsted Point. And this is just a large, large slab of granite. But what caught my eye on this image, first off, was these beautiful angles. I mean, this is just fantastic. And what makes this work is that this tree is growing straight up. And that is just really powerful. So these lines are working great. But what's even better about this image is that I immediately seen these clouds matching the same degree of the, uh, of the granite mountain here. And then you have the layer down here. And Again, I start thinking in triangles. I start looking at, at this as, as its, its own triangle right here. You know, looking at this as, as another powerful shape. In fact, let's, let's get this up. Yeah, so you can see I cropped in because I wanted to, I thought this tree would be a distraction. And, uh, and we had enough data right here that I didn't feel I needed to add any more. There's enough to tell this story right in here. So why not, why not get this larger by cropping in we make, we make our subject larger. We have enough data, enough sky. We don't need that. And this would just be a distraction. It's all about this guy right here and this, uh, this granite slab here. And of course, using, uh, using this to just really draw you right in. Wow, I basically placed this tree literally right on that rule of third. Uh, but I was thinking, yeah, here we go. So this is more of what I was thinking. You can see this imaginary triangle that is just uh, just working in favor of this tree following these lines. So uh, a lot of fun with this image. I really do love this image a lot. It's, it's such a simple yet, uh, yet beautiful and strong image. Anyway, so, uh, so that's the idea behind this image. So be aware of things that are moving and changing, and that's usually your sky because that can really help benefit uh, the decisions you make in the field. All right, let's move on to another image from Yosemite, Tenaya Lake. And um, this image, I just, I love this image. I love this area. This again is all granite coming down. And as you can see, you have all these evergreens growing out of solid granite. It's just really an amazing scene. It's just really gorgeous. What's the subject here? Well, the subject itself is, 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 is actually these evergreens coming out of this granite. And these shapes are really, really bringing more attention to this whole area right here these lines here for composition you can see this this diming in, in, the, in the center really really lines up well um, with with the sort of the core of the image bringing it right into this section right here you know everything's sort of converging and falling right into here and here you can see that I've based almost almost dead center down the the image where instead of giving so much weight to the top so I'm using more of a symmetry type vision for this for this image and that's quite often the, the case when you're working with reflections. 
that we just happen to have uh, some beautiful uh, moon opportunities. You know, this is something you may not see unless you're walking around and looking. And that's exactly what was the case here. And as I'm walking, I see the moon and I'm wondering if I can find something to frame it with. And as I continue walking along the along the lake, I start to see this image coming and uh, into play. And the idea was to sort of walk around and just uh, place myself in a position where I can put this moon in between uh, these trees. But yeah, so the idea was to just get this moon almost like these are two hands, like two wizard hands are, are sort of how I looked at it. And this is the, you know, the crystal ball, if you will. Uh, I had to uh, make two images for this one to focus in on the, on the moon and then another image to keep the actual foreground, the trees in focus as well. I could not do that with uh, with one image. I mean, I'm shooting at 400 millimeters here. So there's no way I can do that. Uh, so I did go ahead and uh, bring these into Photoshop and just merge them down to, uh, to make one image from it. So the moon happens to fall across this top third. I'm not even sure I made that intentional probably felt right it is the you know the main subject of the image so I wouldn't want to have that over here because uh, it's just it's just too much tension and it's um, it's really not uh, giving the moon the attention it really needs you know if you went too high um, there's nothing happening up here this is all you know negative space and uh, it is it, it, there's enough of this data there's enough of this sky and this image and this color that's already present right here we don't need this this is all extra information that is not needed in this image but yeah so this was just a fun image to uh to, to, to make just by just by getting creative i hope you found some value in this video and that you can uh, use some of these tips and techniques in your own landscape photography. I mean, that's the whole point behind this. Uh, if you are new here, um, a like and subscribe would be very helpful. It helps the channel a lot, It's uh, and, and I would appreciate it very much. So that's about it. I'll be heading up to the Adirondacks with my buddies in two days, and I am just, I am just stoked. So I think we timed the, um, the autumn peak foliage up there just really nicely. So we're all looking forward to that going to be shooting bogs and waterfalls and you know mountain tops and scenic vistas and whatnot it should be a dynamite time and uh, and I do plan on making an adventure series uh, similar to the Yosemite or something like the New Zealand video so uh, so stick around and um, until then get out there and shoot and have a fantastic week